We all know exercising, eating a healthy diet, and sleep are fundamental to our overall health. But is training our brain the missing piece of the puzzle? Neurofeedback has been in use for decades to treat an array of brain dysfunctions. It uses technology to monitor the brain in real time, giving individuals insights into their brain activity and patterns. One of the most common ways brain activity is measured is through EEG, or electroencephalography, which measures brain waves. Other neurofeedback devices use technology like functional near-infrared spectroscopy, or FNIRS, which detects changes in the brain's local blood flow and oxygenation in response to neural activation. But the basic principle is that when you can understand what's going on in your brain, it helps you gain better control and regulation over your brain function. Neurofeedback devices have come a long way to becoming the computer-based systems we have today. The history of neurofeedback devices dates back to 1924, when German psychiatrist Hans Berger invented EEG by attaching electrodes to the human head and measuring the electric currents produced. Building off that invention, in the 1950s and 60s, neurofeedback originated with the work of Dr. Joseph Kamia at the University of Chicago and Dr. Barry Sternman at UCLA. Dr. Kamia found that with a simple reward system, people could control their brain waves. He trained people to achieve an alpha state by rewarding them with the sound of a bell. This was the first ever EEG neurofeedback training. Meanwhile, Dr. Sturman realized he could train cats to control their brain waves by rewarding them whenever their brains produced the desired results. Some of these brain-trained cats were later used to test the effects of toxic rocket fuel chemicals that were suspected of causing seizures in NASA's Mercury astronauts. We don't like that. <laughs> this is when he discovered that the cats who had their brains trained were more resistant to the chemical and less likely to have seizures. By the 1960s, numerous neurofeedback devices had been invented and were even embraced by people like Yoko Ono and John Lennon, who demonstrated their use on television. Listen when the clicks start, you hear the sound wobble. Over the last few decades, the whole field of neurofeedback as a treatment has picked up speed. Today, neurofeedback is used to complement the treatment of epilepsy and a variety of other conditions like ADHD, schizophrenia, and autism spectrum disorder, and even enhance the performance of athletes, surgeons, and artists. Everyone gets a taste. There are many different treatment protocols in neurofeedback that all work to address various issues. The issue with neurofeedback today, despite all its potential, is that it remains expensive and inaccessible for most. Mendy produces one of these neurofeedback devices. So he sat down with Mustafa Hamada, head of product and science. He told us about how Mendy started in a clinical setting and after seeing the positive effects of neurofeedback, they decided to find a way to make brain training accessible to the masses. The, the mission statement for Mendy is to really bring technology to people instead of bringing people's technology. And at the, you know, with the advent of personalized medicine and teletherapy and being able to have more agency over your own body and your own treatment. Mendy uses the FNIRS technology that we talked about earlier, and their focus is on training the prefrontal cortex because of its role in executive function. Executive function is involved in things like problem solving, planning, stress management, and self-regulation. They've paired neurofeedback with gamification and infused it with behavioral science to help your brain learn more effectively. It's called procedure learning. And it's the same learning as when you're learning a language or playing an instrument. It's something that you have to continue doing over and over again. You have to develop a discipline, but also consistency over a long period of time. Soundscapes in the background actually elevates low beta. Brain waves in the brain to help you focus better. To incorporate all that is to basically make the neurofeedback training more immersive. We also have, you know, we use positive reinforcements. So every time, for instance, when the ball goes up in the game itself, there's a, like a star sound. What we're using is something called a shepherd's tone. And it's sort of the same type of music on Zimmer, the composer. He uses that for action movies. It's a type of sound illusion that never really gets anywhere. What happens is that he just pings, 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 and then loops back again. And th the reason for this, it basically just tries to suck you in into the game, help you basically get more immersed in the game itself. So let's take the Mendy brain training device for a test drive. It needs to be noted that Mendy recommends that you practice three to four times a week for 10 to 12 weeks to start seeing results. Mendy headset, take one. A little stressed, a lot going on.
Brad had a neural activity of 33%. Tasha had a neural activity of 83%. I'm not gonna say I'm smarter or anything, but I'll let you be the judge. Yeah, I'm not gonna say I'm embarrassed, because I'm not. <laughs> Brain health plays a large role in overall health, and that's been a huge focus of these at-home devices. It's been estimated that one in four people will be affected by mental or neurological disorders at some point in life. On a larger scale, the cost of reduced brain health can have huge impacts on the economy and society as a whole. So the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development estimates that impaired brain health might cost the global economy up to $8.5 trillion in annual loss in productivity. On top of that, the World Health Organization predicts that the number of people with dementia could triple to 152 million people worldwide. This rising you know, prevalence of dementia cost is a concern for the society. In the US alone, the annual cost of dementia in 2022, I think, was $300, $305 billion. And that is expected to soar to $1.5 trillion in 2050. So promoting brain health is not spot about dementia, but also about maintaining cognitive skills in, in, in a, frankly, an aging population worldwide. To solve the problem of, of, of you know, you have an aging population, a decline, you know, a high uh, prevalence of dementia. So Mendy can really provide solutions for, you know, a large population, not just the individual. What's next for Mendy? The Brain Gym, a joint project between the team at Mendy and Accenture Labs. Brain Gym allows users to build cognitive resilience using the Mendy headband, combined with insights from wearables that together fuels personalized recommendations provided by a Gen AI powered brain coach. While these at-home neurofeedback devices have a lot of potential, it's still important that you approach them with realistic expectations about what they can and cannot do for you. In terms of neurofeedback in general, although there are currently no conclusive results about its effectiveness, there are some studies that support its clinical use as non-invasive complementary or alternative treatment. Many researchers consider its potential promising enough to start clinical trials to further investigate it. As we learn more and these technologies become more democratized, many more of us have access to optimizing our minds in the future. So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. I'm Tasha and I'll see you online.